Uzziah, which he is the voice of the war against student loans. So after paying off over $95,000 in debt, only two years after graduating from Baylor University, he became a real estate investor, best-selling author and entrepreneur, placing his network within the top 10% of the wealthiest 30 to 40 year olds in the world. His social media following includes over 25,000 members worldwide, serving over 300 clients in five countries. Before retiring from corporate America, Uzziah worked as an IT project manager, campus recruitment manager, and president of Austin's Black Employee Network at Hewlett Packard. Uzziah has agreed to share his story and how he shows his clients how to get out of debt, create passive streams of income, and start their own businesses. Awesome. So welcome. Welcome, sir. Hey, listen, this is a, a great topic. Um, you know, if Veronica and I is a, a passionate passion for us to be able to share that with our community. So before we jump in and start unpacking a little bit of information, tell us a little bit about your background. We talked about the highlights just now, but we know people always have to grow through some challenges to get to the place they are. So you can unpack as much or as little as you want, but tell us a little bit about Mr. Israel. Absolutely. So thanks again once for having me. Uh, I was born in South Central Los Angeles. Uh, and I grew up in the early 90s during the LA riots. Uh, a lot was going on at, at that time with Rodney King. And, you know, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. And I had to learn how to get better over time. You know, when I was growing up, I was in uh, remedial English. I almost got held back in middle school so that I wouldn't go to high school. And it was very important for me over time to be able to grow. And, you know, one of the things that was a big turning point in my life at an early age was uh, when I was in high school. Uh, in high school, I was in my very first relationship and I was doing horribly in school. I was getting bad grades, you know, hanging out with the wrong crowd. Uh, but in the relationship that I was in, uh, she was getting uh, a 4.5 GPA. And she was actually going to Stanford University, was getting into all kinds of schools, a real big overachiever. And it was basically at about that time that I knew that I really needed to start getting serious about my life. You know, I didn't feel good being in a position where every time somebody saw us, they looked at me as dead weight because she was going places and people right. were like, well, what are you doing with this dude? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so pretty much, you know, from there, that was the motivation that I needed uh, to really kick things in the high gear. Uh, that's when I started getting serious about school. I started getting my grades together and I eventually ended up graduating from Baylor University. Uh, I went to school for IT. Uh, and I always thought that I'd be spending the rest of my life working for a computer company because I always loved uh, being on computers, right? <laughs> but it turns out that I had other plans in store. And even when it came to me graduating, you know, that was a struggle as well because there was a time period in college where I was homeless. You know, when I was graduating, uh, about six months leading up to my graduation, I had no place to stay. Uh, wow. You know, yeah, I, I had uh, roommates in college and my mom told me, make sure that you don't go and get that frat house, make sure that you don't go up and, you know, do this and do that. But I wasn't listening, young and dumb, ended up being homeless. And that was a very valuable lesson for me because it taught me that I had to grow up really quickly if I wanted to succeed. And so I ended up graduating from Baylor in 2010. And then, you know, I thought that once I had gotten into this job at Hewlett Packard, I thought that I made it, you know? I thought, okay, hey, this is what I've been uh, dreaming for all my life. I've been told all my life, go to school, make good grades, get a good job. <laughs> so sure enough, that happened. And then as soon as I landed the job, uh, within a few years, I realized that it really wasn't the path for me. You know, between feeling marginalized at the job, not really feeling like my career could go 
uh, too far in corporate America, I started to rethink my approach to living. I started to think about all of the different skills and talents that God had given me uh, that was never going to flourish behind the cubicle. You know, I started to think about, man, I want to spend my life helping people, but I'm sitting behind a computer desk and I wasn't really able to change lives. You know, I'd always grown up speaking in front of audiences, but of course, with me now being in front of a screen and just doing coding, I didn't really have the opportunity to be able to create the level of impact that I always wanted. And so, you know, I started to realize that it was more than about just being on a computer. It was about me having fulfillment using uh, technology in the right way. And so sure enough, after graduating uh, from college, within two years time, I paid off over $90,000 in student loan debt. Wow. And, you know, a big reason why that happened is because I really didn't realize how serious student loans were <laughs> until Ooh. after I graduated. You know, when I was leaving Los Angeles, I was just looking for anything to get me out of the neighborhood. I was just looking for a reason to, to go somewhere else. And I right. thought it was free money that was being given to me at the time. So I didn't really take it seriously. And so when I graduated, the cost of my student loans every month was more than the cost of my monthly rent. And not mm -hmm. only that, at the exact same time, you know, my mom was foreclosing on her home. My father was about to get evicted from his place. And it was one of those common no things where it was like, okay, we've helped you all this time. Now you've graduated and you got a job. Right. Now, how are you going to give back to the family? So between right. the student loans that I had, you know, family problems, me needing to figure out life for myself since I was just getting on my feet as an adult, all of those things inspired me to learn more about personal finance. And pretty much from that point, I've been serious about personal finance ever since. But how I ended up quitting corporate America and getting into my current business, which is Black Men's Career, is that as I was paying off those student loans, about midway through, I said to myself, man, you know, it'd be a really good idea if I showed other people how to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, all of the friends that I went to college with, they all had student loans. And so by me uh, starting to just make little videos here and there telling people about how I was doing it, I never thought that it would take off into something serious. Mm -hmm. I always imagined I'd spend my entire life in, com in corporate America working at a job, you know, just pretty much mm -hmm. living a regular life. Uh, but once I announced to people that I had paid off my student loans, I started getting all kinds of messages <laughs> from so many people asking me how to do it and they were willing to pay. And right. that venture just got more serious over time. And eventually things got so demanding that I had to transition out of my nine to five job in order to keep up with the demand that I was having in my business. Right, right. Wow. You, know, you know, we appreciate you for sharing that story. You know, oftentimes people uh, kind of hesitate to unpack their background. Right. But it's extremely important because other people are listening and they may be going through or know someone that's going through the same challenges that you grew through already. And hearing that story kind of keeps that carrot dangling in front of them and keeps the hope going, hope give you power today right. to keep going. And it just builds up that faith. Um, but wait, I'm sorry. No, I was about to ask. So if you don't mind, can you kind of like give us a little snippet on how you were able to pay off that debt? Yeah, I mean, so at the end of the day, it's all about long-term vision. When I started trying to pay off my student loan debt, I imagined that it would take me five years. Mm. But the more focus that I got on paying off student loans, the more new doors of opportunity opened up so that I could pay it off faster. So when I first started mapping out my plan to pay off my student loans, it was just as simple as me using a budget through mint.com. And when I started budgeting my money 
because that's half the battle right there. So many people don't even know where the money is going. <laughs> Give us that website again. Some people missed it. What was that website? That's mint.com, M-I-N-T.com. It's a free online budgeting software that I used uh, to help pay off my student loans. It was a really, really big help. Awesome. And so, yeah, man, I, you know, all I did was just sit down and map out, okay, how much money am I making and how much money can I afford to pay towards my student loans every month? Uh, I remember actually hearing Warren Buffett say in an interview one day that if you had student loans that took longer than five years to pay off, that you were not actually getting the best ROI from your education, wow. you know? So as soon as I heard that, that gave me a target. And I think that was really important in and of itself, Randy, because, you know, a lot of times we go through our life with, with no vision or no purpose. We're just kind of going through the motions. We've never been taught about financial literacy. Right. So, you know, I was blessed to grow up during an era where there were so many thought leaders uh, that were starting to put their content out. And it was easy to be able to tap in through the web in terms of what financial experts were doing. So I said, man, let me put myself on this five-year plan. And before you knew it, um, I started to find different ways to reach the goal faster. When I first started out, I thought that I was only going to pay it off using money from my nine to five job. But then I started thinking, well, I got some things around the house I could sell. And so I started, you know, getting into eBay and I started doing some uh, auctions. I started doing little side hustles where I could make, you know, a, a, a couple extra hundred dollars uh, within a matter of days that I could just use towards paying off the debt. You know, there were so many different opportunities uh, that started coming to me. But I think that it started to come to me in the way that it did because I put my mind towards my purpose. Had I not really been focused on paying off student loans obsessively, those opportunities probably wouldn't have presented itself because I wouldn't have had my focus locked in enough to see that there were so many different opportunities that were right in front of me. Good point, good point. And you know, I love that because, you know, when you recap what you've done, you know, first you made a decision. You decided that this was what's, what I was going to do. Second, you made that plan. And when you, once you had that plan, third, you started working that plan. Right. And like you said, you was focused. You was clear. You was concise. And obviously, it was a burning desire within you. Right. And so, like you said, oftentimes you miss certain opportunities because you're not really focusing, focusing on it. You know, for a quick example, you know, you might buy a brand new car that's yellow, right? Yellow Mustang. And, right. you know, prior to you buying that yellow yellow Mustang, you have never seen it before. Right. And yeah. all of a sudden it's in your driveway, you're driving like, man, look at that yellow <laughs> Mustang. Look at that one. What is this? I've seen them everywhere. <laughs> right. So, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing because, you know, Veronica and I, we study this all the time. That's why we love to bring special guest speakers and, and intellectual individuals like yourself to be able to share your story. So tell us a, a little bit about the company uh, that you have. Tell us a little bit about the company. Yeah, so Black Men's Career um, is an online education company that shows brothers how to be able to get better jobs, pay off their debts, uh, and start their own businesses so that they could transition out of their nine to five jobs. Now, uh, I have my YouTube channel that puts out regular content um, across so many different uh, areas, whether we're talking about how to buy your first rental property in 90 days, uh, how to be able to get a better job within 90 days. The, the concept behind Black Men's Career uh, was just me thinking that there are so many young brothers out there wanting to look for a better way of living. Uh, but there's been so much programming that, that suggests that we can only succeed in life, you know, in, in a few categories. Right, if, exactly. if we're, you know, playing ball, if we're selling drugs, you know, if, if we're rapping, 
you know, yeah. there's there's nothing wrong with us using our talents um, in, in any way possible in the way that God gives it to us. But there's so many of us that don't fit that particular mold. Right. And one of the biggest challenges that I went through growing up is, you know, whenever I saw these different uh, financial experts, um, as well as leaders and motivational speakers and personal development, a lot of times I felt that they couldn't understand my story. Mm. I couldn't trust that they knew what I was going through. So I didn't feel that they could show me how to get <laughs> out of my situation. You know, um, it's very important whenever you can have someone um, who's been where you've been, walk you through how to get through some of your challenges. And so, you know, really, it's my business, but it's something that I could do in my sleep. It's something that, you know, I could do oftentimes totally for free because I'm so passionate to serve my community. Right. right. Awesome. And, you know, that's the importance of having that mentor, you know, having that coach, because, you know, sometimes we start off with a decision and a goal, but we take that long route around hitting our head against the wall. Sometimes we don't have to do that when we can simply find that person who've already done what we want to accomplish and be able to, one, either have a friendship with them where it doesn't cost anything, or two, you're going to have to pay for it, right? It's, it's called, it's, 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 it's a seed that you have to sow into your, your, your life. Like you have to, what the word I'm looking for, it, it has to be, it has to be a passion. You have to be hungry for it and say, okay, this is a sacrifice that I'm going to make. If I could go buy them new Michael Jordan tennis shoes, if I could go spend $50 on a movie today, right? Today mm -hmm. is so expensive, then I could take this money and put towards my financial education. Absolutely. Um, you know, just a little bit of background about my story. And I don't want to take up too much uh, of your time, but, you know, we almost have similar backgrounds because, you know, I grew up in New Orleans and at one point it was known as the murder capital of the world. Mm. Um, I come from a two parent household, my mom, my dad, um, my dad was a construction worker for a while. He got injured and he started working as a maintenance technician with a local real estate investor. Uh, my mom was a stay-at-home mom the majority of my life until I got a little older, maybe in my early teens, and I was able to kind of fend for myself, and she started working as a domestic worker. So my parents didn't make a whole lot of money, and so they didn't make a whole lot of money because they didn't know the principles that you're sharing right now, but they gave me the love, they gave me passion, they, they shared with me the scriptures, and so I appreciate them dearly for that, um, but I grew up making money, but I spent all my money. Right. So at the, you know, my teenage years, I started being, became an at-risk youth. It's like most of the uh, teenagers, male teenagers in New Orleans, got into some trouble. Uh, and then at 19 years old, I had my first son. So I quickly became a struggling teenage father. Mm. And in 2005, I was 25 years old and Hurricane Katrina came to New Orleans. And I remember we left, went to Atlanta, Georgia, sitting in a hotel room, thinking we're going on a mini vacation, right? And just sitting um, in that hotel room on the bed, feet, feet flat against the floor, my elbows in my lap just leaning over and looking at a grocery store near my home and water was above it. Wow. And I quickly realized and say, I'm literally homeless right about now, right? Yeah. And I'm, I'm looking at this and at the time I had less than $500 in my bank account because I wasn't saving anything. Mm -hmm. I'll be the first one to tell it. My credit score was horrible. It was in a low 500s. And I was broke, busted. And more important, I was broken. I hit rock bottom at that point. I didn't know what to do. Right. Uh, and at that time, you know, you know, I jokingly, like Les Brown would say all the time, you know, I was so broke. You know, my kids used to answer the phone when the credit card called. My daddy said he ain't home. Right? <laughs> I, oh, yeah. I knew how to get back on my feet quick. And that was just the mystery car payments, right? <laughs> so, right. So it, it was bad, but I thank the most high God because he He gave me what he promised. He gave me bread, water, clothes, and shelter. There you um, go. We did not, or was, we was not on the street homeless. Um, and fast forward a little bit, I had an older brother that was 11 years older than me. And he had just purchased a house like 30 minutes from New Orleans outside of that, that bowl, if you will. 
And so he started sharing me his story of how he purchased a home, shared some resources with me, and I was listening. Uh, then I had another mentor that kind of introduced me to financial literacy as well, uh, reading certain books. And then I finally made the decision like you did and said, enough is enough. Like, this cannot happen. Right. And, you know, I was able to purchase my first home one year later uh, from being hitting rock bottom in 2006. I was able to buy my first home because I got serious. I was able to lower my debts, lower my expenses, start to um, increase my savings. And, and, and so I, I share that story because the passion that you had is real because most brothers, most sisters um, go through that. And right. uh, so tell, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, how can they get in touch with you? Like what type of uh, programs you have where they can actually connect with Brother Yazai? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I would say that the best uh, platform to find me on is YouTube. Go to YouTube, go to youtube.com slash black men's career. Uh, you will find a lot of my content right there. Now in all for free. Now in terms of, you know, some of my uh, programs that I offer, you could find that on blackmenscareer.com. And just to kind of walk through uh, some of them in detail. So I have a free book that's known as the How to Succeed Survival Guide. That's right on blackmenscareer.com. All you have to do is just secure your free copy of the book and I'll ship it right out your way. And that book, it basically helps people make the transition uh, out of college into adult life. OK, this is a book that's primarily uh, for people that are 20 in their 20s that are looking to really get on their feet. But even if you are a little bit older and you're still trying to get a solid footing in life, there are a lot of valuable principles as well. In that book, I talk about things like time management, uh, mm -hmm. financial management, your location, which makes a very, very big impact on your success. You know, all of the pillars that took me from uh, being broke and homeless to then paying off over $90,000 in debt, I recorded in that book. So that's oh. one of my very first offerings, which is totally for free. Uh, I also offer a 12 month uh, membership club known as your breakthrough year. You know, this is for people who have really decided that, hey, I want to make this year the year that I move forward. You know, it could be very easy to feel like you get caught up in a rut in life at times. And so in the breakthrough year, it basically walks you through all of the important steps to transform your finances, uh, your time, uh, your energy, as well as understanding the secrets of high performers. Mm -hmm. All high performance people have strategies and routines that governs their day. And I've taken a large study of that and put it into the program step by step. And so in your breakthrough year, it's a 12 month walkthrough where I kind of give you the new bits of content every month to give you a different lens to focus on to get you one step closer to having that breakthrough year. Awesome. Uh, I, I also offer uh, a maximum productivity masterclass, which is my time management masterclass uh, for anybody that's looking to get a lot done in a short amount of time. I've outlined in that program the personal time management system that I used that allowed me to pay off my $90,000 in debt, quit my job in corporate America, become a real estate investor, as well as a best selling author, all in my 20s. And so, you know, you may be thinking that, man, you know, there's a lot of things that I want to accomplish, but it feels like I have so far to go. Well, in the Maximum Productivity Masterclass, it shows you how to cut the learning curve. It shows you how uh, the most elite performers are able to get more things done by 9 a.m. than most people do in a day. And a lot of times it's not even so much about, you know, oh man, this person is so smart or this person is from another planet. There's uh, steps, <laughs> there's a process that most people don't know. We've never been taught it growing up. And so that program outlines the tools. Lastly is my premier program, Zero to Six Figures, 
Uh, this is for family-oriented, career-driven professionals who's looking to create a six-figure net worth so that they could build wealth, create multiple streams of income, and have real assets to pass down to their kids. So, you know, for all of the listeners that's serious about leaving a legacy and, you know, creating passive streams of income or building your credit, then zero to six figures is the program for you. Because in that program, it's a six week masterclass along with five bonuses that shows you how to create passive streams of income, how to be able to replace your current income from your nine to five job and create new income online as an entrepreneur, along with so many other things. Awesome, awesome. You know, you hit on a, a lot of points because we know one thing, debt, debt is a huge, huge thing. And, you know, from us being in, in the market industry, I was speaking to a, a person earlier today and um, they mentioned that they had over 300 Fifty thousand dollars just in student loans, wow. um, and the annual income gross was like fifty-two thousand mm. dollars. And so, you know, it's just tough to be able to hear those stories because yeah. it keeps a lot of us out of that ram of getting to that point of being financially in independent. Right. So, when you hit your products that you have, the services you provide, we can plug into your system to be able to get the strategies, get the principles. And to be able to most important focus and just apply them every single day. And then we could get the same results that you, you receive. So we did talk a little bit about paying off the debt, but give us some tips, if you will, on what type of income stream that we can acquire to kind of help us a little bit to accelerate, you know, to pay off some debt to more important just to, just to survive today and at some point in the future be able to thrive. Well, it all really begins with investing in yourself. When you invest in yourself, you tap into the gifts that you possess that you can monetize. You know, so many people, Randy, are looking for like the next in thing that could just make them quick money overnight, right. whether it be real estate, Forex trading, cryptocurrency, all of these different things. You know, a lot of people rush into fads not knowing anything about the industry. And as a result, it doesn't create long-term income. The number one thing that I encourage to my clients is to take a stock of what your best natural strengths are and placing those strengths in the right environment that will create value for other people. So to give a prime example, so you remember how I always told you about how it's been all of my time on computers. Growing up, computers was my thing. But, you know, people used to always tell me, man, you should be a speaker. Man, you should be a lawyer. You know, even when I didn't care anything about church, people used to always tell me, man, you're going to be a reverend one day. <laughs> right. Right. And, you know, it's just kind of so funny, you know, how, how things change over time because sure enough over time uh through the grace of the most high i was able to be in a position where i took the skills that i had in a computer and i was able to package a lot of my speaking online mm -hmm. so i was able to take multiple strengths that i had whether it was of speaking teaching you know all of these different personalized gifts and I was able to put it in an environment that worked best for me. You know, that's one thing that's different from if I was just going from one building to another doing speaking engagements. Some people are very good in that atmosphere. For me, my sweet spot is online. And a lot of people don't know what their sweet spot is because they've been programmed to just kind of live this life where you're always being told what you should do or what most people do rather than what works specifically for you. So the most important thing that you need to do to create income, especially in this modern day where everybody is learning to learn skills online, everybody's looking for different things that you have to offer, take stock of the top strengths that you have. What are the things that strangers tell you that you're good at? Because if strangers are telling you that you're good at something, then chances are that means that people would be willing to pay for it. Right. Identify what your top strengths are and then 
figure out how to use those strengths to solve a problem in the marketplace that you could deliver to your customers. Because really at the end of the day, business is simply solving problems. Somebody has a problem and they're willing to pay you money to figure out how to solve it. That's right. Awesome. Yeah. You, know, you know, that's so different than the average person. The average person would have answered that question. You know what? You need to be doing A, you need to be doing C, you need to be in cryptocurrency, you need to sell T-shirts, you need to do this. But you didn't do that. You say, no, it's the passion first. You have to go within, find out what you're good at, what that passion is, you know, what's that that talent that the most high didn't gave you, what you right. love doing. You mentioned it earlier, you will do this for free. Right. Because you love you, you love doing it. And, and, um, and, and by the way, it shows that we, we can tell through the spirit that you right. absolutely are focused on helping. Yeah. Right. So and that's, that's like if you if you the type of person that wake up in the morning or every morning or when Monday comes, you just hate Monday because <laughs> I gotta go to this job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then I, I feel like you're speaking to to, to them. Right. <laughs> absolutely. And I just want to point out, you know, because this is a this is one big area where a lot of people get tripped up too, you know, because they have a saying do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. And there's a bit of a slippery slope to that, to be honest, because you have to make sure that you align your passion with value. Mm -hmm. What I mean is, see, you could have all the passions in the world, mm -hmm. but if nobody cares about what your passion is, then that means that nobody is willing to pay you for right. what you have to offer. You know, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, not like 80% of all businesses fail within the first five years. And one of the biggest reasons why that happens is because, you know, people have passions about things, but they didn't bridge the gap on how does this passion solve somebody else's problems? You could have a passion for eating popcorn, but that doesn't mean that somebody's going to be paying you money to watch your popcorn. Tell it, tell it to my son. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's like you got to figure out, okay, what are some of the most painful problems that people in my target market are facing? What is it? Okay, you know how you got that friend that takes for granted some of their skills and you would go up to them and say, man, you need to, you need to be selling this to people. People be paying you right. to do this, right. right? That's the sweet spot. It's not just about solving problems because people go to work every day to solve problems for others and they can't stand their job. Right. And it's not just about passion because so many people do things out of passion, hoping that somebody else will want it but just because you care about it doesn't mean that somebody will also. So this is why it's so important for you to really research the marketplace. You know, you could see where trends are going and you really want to identify, okay, well, what is it that I do naturally that's just a little bit better than the average person? One thing I always recommend people to do is find the talents that if you honed it properly would put you in the top 5% of people in the world in that industry mm -hmm. because people pay for the top 5%, right? right? If, some, if somebody is going to go to the movie theater now that lockdowns are letting up, they're not going to want to go and watch an average movie. They're going right. to want to watch, you know, the best of the best. When people spend their money, they pay for quality. So find an area where you can be a quality performer that's passion for you, that drives you, and make sure that it's valuable to another person. And one of the best ways that you could do that is honestly just by making conversation with people, just by asking people, hey, what is it that you struggle with? What are some of your most pressing problems in this area? You know, when I was starting my business with Black Men's Career, I didn't go out into the market presuming uh, that I knew what people wanted. Mm -hmm. I started asking them what some of their biggest challenges were. And then I based my content around solutions to those problems. 
Awesome, awesome. Right. So we're gonna switch gears. We're gonna we wrapping up. So we have some questions for you, sir. Yes, sir. So that first question is, if you can go back in time and coach the younger Yaziah, right? What financial advice would you give him? Take what it is that I'm passionate about and make and turn it into a business. Thank and you. really, everything that I'm doing right now. I could have been doing at 15 years old if I was more focused. Mm. The internet was around, <laughs> computers were around, but I was just so, you know, caught up into all these other random things, playing video games, hanging out with the wrong crowd, et cetera, that if I would have just focused at that time, I would be doing the exact same thing that I'm doing right now, but earlier. And a lot oh. of times that comes back to bite me now because I'm playing catch up for lost time. Right. right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So why did you decide to become an advocate for financial success, real estate investing and a servant leader? Well, I'm a firm believer that there are a lot of well-intentioned people in this world um, and they may not have been handed the best set of cards in life and they just need a little bit of push to do better. You know, uh, I started my business with the thought process that there was somebody that was growing up in a neighborhood like me that was on their way to jail because they didn't have any answers and they stumbled upon my video and it turned their life around. That was a dream that I had one night that ended up inspiring me to start Black Men's Career. Awesome. Awesome. Love it. Love it. So what is financial education? Excuse me. Why is financial education and responsible home ownership important? Well, I mean, we live in America, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and as we know, America is extremely capitalistic. So on some level, you have to have money. <laughs> you ain't gotta be the richest person in the world, uh, but it's very hard for you to live your best life if you are financially illiterate. And my biggest thing is about creating generational wealth. You know, there's so many of us uh, that are born into uh, lower circumstances and our job is to break the cycle rather than repeat the cycle where one generation passes and there's very little to hand over. You know, when I pass away, I would want my sons to have more than just the piece of clothing that I bought. I would want them to be able to have their own property, uh, their own business, uh, their own family history about who came before them so that way they could have a better chance to get ahead in life better than I did. Right. That's right. And how can someone connect and learn more about you um, and also your books and your programs? So give it to us one more time because we have some people just joined We're late. Absolutely. Go to blackmenscareer.com to check out all of my programs and courses. To check out all of my free content, you could find me on youtube.com slash blackmenscareer. You could also find me on Instagram at blackmenscareer. Awesome, awesome. So listen, guys, that's the end of our show. This is going to be, well, this was recorded, so we'll have the rebroadcast for you so you can watch it. Send it to a friend, send it to a family member. To Mr. Israel sent, uh, shared a lot of great content. You, you don't want to miss this. So make sure you check him out on Facebook. Uh, myself, you can find me at Mr. Randy Chambliss at Facebook, on Facebook and on Instagram. Uh, my direct number is 504-270-2783. We do do a free consultation uh, with you. Uh, you can find me online at randyknowsmortgages.com. And I'm Veronica Chambliss. You can find me on, on social media under Veronica Chambliss and it's Facebook and Instagram. I'm also online at theknowsmortgages.com and that's B E 